Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 103. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to roll forward database multiple times without getting missing log file error. Uh, this means like I am issuing uh, multiple roll forward DB commands. Now this slide talks about the problem scenario. The problem scenario is we want to demonstrate how to roll forward database uh, multiple times without getting the missing log file error. Uh, suppose if you have a scenario wherein there are 1000 log files for roll forward, so you can always uh, copy those 1000 log files into the overflow log path directory and you can use that overflow log path uh, option in the roll forward db command and you can roll forward all in one command. Okay. Now, if there is some scenario wherein you want to roll forward into chunks of uh, files, so, so because of some limited space or something like that, so you want to split your roll forward into, you know, like 1 to 100, 101 to 200, 201 to 300 and so on like that. Now, the question is, let's say the first I issue the roll forward command with 1 to 100 log files in the overflow log path. Now, the second time when I issue the roll forward, can I delete 1 to 100 and copy 101 to 200 transactional log files in the overflow log path? If I do that, I may get SQL1273N, error missing log file, some log number between 1 to 100. Sometimes it comes, okay? Now, how to identify the log files that are not to be deleted from the overflow log path between the subsequent roll forward operations? So that is what I'm, I'm going to talk about. Uh, that is the scenario uh, that we are discussing. So the solution is there are, when you issue the roll forward command in the roll forward output, you will see log files processed and next log file to be read. So you will find that, you, for example, you will, you will find that the log files processed is, in our case it is, uh, I'm just saying as an example, so 350.log to 355.log, but the next log file to be read is 361. So you can see a gap there, uh, like 356, 357, 358, 359. So all these log files, like what, what to do? So which means that I can delete up to 355.log and I have to keep 356 onwards in the overflow log path and I can subsequently issue another roll forward command. So a log file is required in the overflow log path uh, folder uh, till the corresponding commit or log um, transactional log record is traversed. Um, I think traversed is a correct word. So, so until it, it is replayed. So, uh, so what do I mean by that is even though the next log file to be read is 361, so I cannot say I'll, I'll keep till 361. What is the problem? So I, I can always delete 355, 354, right? Even though that, even though it is the case, it's not like that. Okay. So it might seem like that, but it is not like that. So you need to understand uh, how these transactional logging is there in the log file. So one log file can have the transaction start point, but the, the equivalent commit or rollback log record for the transaction might be there after four or five log files. So typically, so, so that is, so if you get into example, I think as usual, we'll go into examples so that it will be more clearer. Uh, so let me, let me show you here the example file. So I've already created the demo database. I've updated the uh, archival logging parameter enabled for archival. Then I've taken a backup. So because after enabling archiving, we have to take a backup. Then I'm connecting to the database. Uh, then I have created the table T underscore log. And, and the database is still active. I go into another terminal, back up the database online. I take the backup. Now in all these things are done, okay. Uh, and I exit the terminal, okay, the term two. Then I come back to terminal one. I run this bulk no c dot SQL, which is going to just insert records into t underscore log. And uh, see here, I'm not using any commit switch so which means the default commit will be there so after every single insert record the commit record is also uh, uh, is also done so after some file log files are getting archived i am committing uh, issuing a commit and uh, and after that i'm issuing the db2 plus c hyphen tf so here you can see plus c which means uh, 
which means these transactions are not committed so one so this this particular transaction will run for file log files whereas in these file log files there will be a lot of commits after every statement whereas here that is the difference i hope you you get the difference and do the connect reset and move all the archive log log files into some particular folder and drop the database and terminate so i have done all these steps so now i have a backup image okay so the backup image the timestamp taken is uh, shown here this is the this is the backup this particular backup image is the timestamp shown here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to restore that database okay so let me copy that and put it here now the restore is going to take some time okay um okay so if we come back to the discussion so so what i'm saying is th there is a concept of oldest transactional log record okay so in in a log file there will be one transactional log record it, it is opening right uh, like like an insert record okay it still has not committed so but after some four or five log files only the commit log record for that corresponding insert will be there so i have to provide these four or five log files together in the overflow log path in a single or in a single roll forward activity i cannot split these files into two chunks like say two files here and three files in the next roll forward subsequent roll forward so so when i issue a roll forward i have to make sure that all the necessary log files are there in the overflow log path that it is expecting so how do i do that is very simple actually so you can look at look at that i am going to demonstrate uh, and also so before hand before even starting the roll forward so you just have say let's say access to 1000 log files but you want uh, but you want to understand in each of those transactional log files how to understand the log space and all then there might be some utilities the internal ibm developers or you know uh, uh, or the internal team might use Uh, which i am not aware of but uh, the, what the but but the concept should be should be almost the same they track it with the lsn numbers okay so each transaction will have some lsn number associated with it and you can uh, analyze the log file contents uh, and try to give that information but but that will be i guess it will be like a internal thing to do like you know if you raise some pmr or something they might hand you that utility or something for debugging purposes so at least it's not available uh, as a free utility or free download somewhere uh, as far as i know okay so i think still the restore is taking a lot of time so let us go through what i'm going to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to then issue roll forward query the status then i'm going to say roll forward db db name to end of logs with overflow log path then i'll be repeating this end of logs and i'll be demonstrating that thing that i am saying okay it's still not there so i can show you in the meantime see i have from 0 to 13 so all the log files are here okay okay thing we need to let's take in time let's we'll have to wait it out okay is it there or we there yet okay okay let me check okay still not there was way longer time than expected it's uh, it's just a small database i don't know why it is taking such a long time oh god am i in the correct directory let me say db2 list utilities is it running something 
yeah utilities show detail it is still executing i don't know what it why it takes such a long long time it is usually not that complicated okay wow it just took significantly huge amount of time but that's just my laptop yeah. okay so let's run the roll forward command query status now this is going to show me after the restore so it is looking for 000.log so i'm going to give take the 00.log so i'm going to take from 00 to 6.log okay so copy that and put it in ofl folder okay so i am providing from 0 to 6 okay you can see that now next i am going to do roll forward by providing the overflow log path so 0 to 6 is there <coughs> so sorry so db2 roll forward db db name to end of logs okay so 0 to 6 so you you should see this roll forward status that is, it is going to come back after the roll forward you can see the log files processed and next log file to be read that that is what i'm going to i'm going to show it to you man this is too slow i just don't believe i have 8 gb ram now okay so so you can see here 0 to 5 right and then next log file to be read is 6 so which means that from 0 to 5 i can delete but i should keep 6 dot log file okay now let me do one thing so let me go 0 to 5 i'll delete done then so i what i'll do 7 8 9 i'll provide right? i mean i'll copy and i'll put it in ofl so 6 7 8 9 is there right now now this is where you need to look what happens right look at here so 0 to 5 is not required that is fine that is okay with us so 6 7 8 9 i have provided okay now look at here it still says 0 to 5 right so which means that 6 so this indicates that and you can see the next log file to be read is 9 so which means this indicates that the 6 dot log s0006 dot log has opened a transaction and like in the 6 also there is no commit record for that transaction in the 7 dot log also there is no commit in the 8 log also there is no commit or rollback in the 9 now it is looking for the 9 okay so still it has not found the equivalent commit or log uh, rollback log record for a transaction which has been opened in 6 now even if i provide 9 10 11 12 i cannot delete 6 see that is what i'm going to show you so i'm going to delete 6 for example and i'm going to provide uh, 10 11 12 okay so copy that see 9 so 7 8 9 10 11 12 i have and as per this output it is only looking for the 9 log 9 dot log for the next log file to be read so what is the problem it can roll forward that's how we typically think but it will not okay see it, it is still looking for that 6 dot log right so so I have to provide that 6 dot log that that's the whole I mean that's the tutorial right so uh, I'll copy that 6 dot log copy that and come back here paste and I'll also do one more thing I'll just copy the 13 also that's the only thing missing so why why to why to do one more time right so 6 to 13 I have provided okay roll forward so that's the thing even though your current log file like from 9 onwards even though you are providing this number is what is important so this gap will tell you you know that that which log file should not be deleted uh, so instead of so in our uh, if you look at the slide so I, instead of deleting everything and starting from 101 to 200 you may have to keep from 95 and then only some 95 to 195 you know those range of log files you can copy right so so even now here see 0 to 12 so is not required no we have processed it so 0 to 12 is not required so i'll delete 
everything here but 13 is required see here 0 to 12 is processed now the next log file that is to be read is 14 but in any case I don't have a 14 so uh, so there is only 13 dot log file which I cannot delete I have to provide it in the overflow log path then then I'll go and I'll say uh, I'll say complete right so copy that and okay I'll say complete that's it oh okay uh, a small mistake okay I don't know how did I miss that okay yeah I have missed it okay all set yes so all the log files have been processed and everything is uh, uh, cool now so I can connect to demo database and so that that's the whole point so you should look for the for the the next log file to be read and log files processed so whatever the log file process number indicates the, the last number so the, the end uh, there is a start number and an end number so the end number of the log files is what you should up to that you can delete in the from the overflow uh, from the overflow log directory so that's it uh, so that that's the tip that I wanted to provide hope this information was useful to you uh, see you in the next video tutorial uh, until then, bye bye. Please subscribe to my channel youtube.com slash db2luw academy and you can find the the files to be the, the script files that I'm using. You can find it in db2luw academy dot blogspot dot Okay. Thank you all. See you in the next video tutorial. Bye bye.